concerning the thumb, uh, remember that the thumb has one flexor tendon only because the uh, uh, phalanges are two and not three. And uh, the, uh, the, the tendon was located uh, you saw before that, that the tendon is located on the radial aspect of the carpal tunnel, and uh, soon after crossing the carpal tunnel, the tendon deflects, uh, entering the uh, tenar eminence. And in the tenar eminence, uh, this tendon is surrounded by a variety of muscle tissues, including the two bellies of the flexor pollicis brevis and uh, the abductor uh, pollicis brevis. Uh, I show the um, uh, the flexor, uh, the flexor uh, uh, pollicis longus, starting at the level of the carpal tunnel, uh, flexing and extending the thumb. We see that uh, the tendon is this one, is the most radial one of all tendons of the carpal tunnel. This is the trapezium, uh, this is the tendon, and when we go more distally, we see the tendon as it enters the, uh, the tenar eminence and is surrounded by the muscle belly uh, described before. Uh, the other uh, important tendon uh, uh, passing uh, uh, over the ventral aspect of the wrist is the flexor carpi radialis, and the flexor carpi radialis enters the wrist crossing the uh, tubercle of the scaphoid, and then is firmly stabilized against the uh, trapezium by fibrotic tissue. Uh, this fibrotic tissue is used uh, by the flexor pollicis longus to redirect its course toward the thumb. And uh, uh, the close relationship uh, of this tendon with the ventral aspect of the tree scape joint make it uh, vulnerable uh, to uh, degenerative osteoarthritis in the tree scape joint. With, uh, in fact, uh, the tendon may be impinged, impinged at this area by ventral osteophytes coming from the, uh, the, the trapezium and the scaphoid. And uh, when we examine the uh, flex, when we examine the flexor uh, carpi uh, radialis, uh, and we start at the level of the distal uh, forearm, this is the tendon. Then we approach the, the carpal tunnel, and we see that the tendon passes uh, uh, superficial to the uh, uh, tubercle of the scaphoid. Uh, this is the scaphoid. Then the same tendon as it uh, passes alongside uh, the trapezium. This is the tubercle of trapezium, and this is the flexor carpi, ulnari, uh, carpi radialis. Note that, that the tendon runs outside the carpal tunnel. These are the other flexor tendons running within the carpal tunnel. And finally, the tendon will go more deeply. Here is a, a, appears as a hypo or a hyperechoic structure, depending on anisotropy, to insert into the base of the second metacarpal. And the fingers, uh, the uh, tendon, the flexor tendons have an, a peculiar arrangement. In fact, the flexor digitorum profundus has a straight course and it will go to insert into the base of the distal phalanx. On the other hand, the flexor digitorum superficialis splits at the level of the proximal phalanx into two, uh, uh, two, 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 two slips. And the two slips of the flexor digitorum superficialis pass on each side of the flexor digitorum profundus to insert into uh, the uh, middle phalanx. And uh, this kind of arrangement gives uh, an autonomous flexion of the, uh, of the phalanges with the, uh, the flexor digitorum profundus, which acts uh, selectively acts uh, on the distal phalanx, and the flexor digitorum superficialis uh, acting on the f on flexion of the uh, middle phalanx. Uh, therefore, when we uh, examine the tendon in this area, this is a cadaveric image in which you have the two tendons, and uh, af uh, the, in which you see the flexor digitorum superficialis after removal of the flexor digitorum profundus. This is the only flexor digitorum superficialis. When we examine this tendon on transverse planes, we'll see uh, the uh, central tendon, the flexor digitorum profundus, and the two, ba uh, two, two layers of the flexor digitorum superficialis as they pass on each side of the profundus and then as they go more deeply to insert into the middle phalanx. This this can be nicely seen uh, uh, using um, uh, ultrasound and uh, placing the transducer. We are now using a higher frequency transducer 
18 6 megahertz probe and we see the uh, the tendons these are uh, these are the two flexor tendons at the level of the head of um, the metacarpal you see that the tendons are uh, located um, uh, as paired structure this is the superficial this is the deep tendon and going more distally we see the two tendons again then look at the superficial tendon it splits into two bundles. The two bundles pass on each side of the profundus. This is the profundus, this is the radial and the ulnar uh, um, slips of the superficialis. The profundus becomes hypoechoicid as a result of anisotropy, but anisotropy may be helpful in this case because it allows us to separate the profundus from the two components of the superficialis. And then we go on and we see the two, uh, the, the two uh, slips of the profundus as they uh, insert into the, the middle phalanx and distally the only flexodigitorum profundus as it continues its course to insert into the, uh, into the distal phalanx. When we use a long axis plane, uh, we see the two tendons at the level of the uh, metacarpophalangeal joint, then we go on and we see the two tendons uh, uh, coursing over the proximal phalanx. Now we are at the level of the proximal interphalangeal joint, and we see the two tendons again. And more distally, we see uh, a, a layer, a deep layer, this one, uh, representing the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis. This is the flexor digitorum uh, profundus. This is uh, the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis into the base of the middle phalanx. And this is the, the other insertion of the other slip of the flexor digitorum superficialis. The four, uh, it, it, this tendon has two, two uh, as the insertion of the two slips. One is this one, uh, the other one is this, is this one. And finally, you can follow the flexor digitorum superficialis until it's inserted into the base of the distal phalanx. Of course, when I place the transducer over the, uh, the head of the metacarpal and I flex the finger, I see the two tendons as they glide, no? But when I lock the middle phalanx into, uh, onto the table and I flex the uh, distal interphalangeal joint, I can move the only uh, deep tendon, whereas the superficial one remains uh, still, doesn't move. Now both are moving now the deep tendon is moving. And uh, this maneuver may be so helpful to uh, assess the function of these tendons. Then uh, the flexor tendons are firmly stabilized against the, the phalanges by uh, complex systems of digital annular pulleys. And the digital annular pulleys are focal thickening of the fascia, you see here. Uh, they, they, their main function is to maintain the flexor tendons uh, uh, firmly stabilized against the phalanges during contraction of the muscle, if not the, uh, the tendons elevate from the bone. No? They are very, very thin, but they are very important in terms of function. We have five annular pulleys, A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. The, uh, the um, A1, A3, and A5 pulley are located at the level of the head of the metacarpal, proximal phalanx, and middle phalanx. On the other hand, the uh, A2 and A4 pulley are located at the level of the, uh, of the shaft of the proximal and the shaft of the uh, middle phalanx. And this is a cadaveric dissection in which you see the pulleys are very thin structure uh, located here. Um, <clears throat> the pulleys are uh, measure uh, much less than one millimeter, and uh, uh, high frequency transducers are able to demonstrate them. We start at the level of the mid palm, and we see the two tendons, the two flexor tendons, going more distally. You see a hypoechoic structure surrounding the tendon. The hypoechoic structure is fibrillar here. On each side of the tendons, uh, the, uh, the pulley uh, has, is characterized by, uh, uh, by an artifact with a uh, hypoechoic appearance here. But anyway, this structure is the, the first pulley, is the A1 pulley. Then we go 
more distally, the A1 pulley, dis A1 pulley disappears, and we are now examining the flexor tendons at the level of the uh, proximal phalanx, and we can identify the A2 pulley. This is the A2 pulley. Uh, look at the, at, the, 